sobriety and peace. A changed man. Those heart-touching words, God is your only hope, was the beginning of my search to know God. Being sincere and having a heart's desire for change was the key to understanding the gospel message. You know, it's amazing to think that a police sergeant could have had as much time spent with me and yet the concern that he had for me was was un- unreal. On the last occasion of my last arrest, he drove in behind me where I was in my utility, slumped over the wheel, and the police with him stayed in the car with the lights on and he ran through into the side door of this garage that I was parked in. He took a look and seen me behind the wheel. He opened the door and he told me, I have it on tape, he said to me, I had that pistol loaded and cocked and I remember the door being opened and he put the pistol in my rib here and I dived for my gun which I thought was under the seat but thankfully a young friend took it that night while I was drinking and I fell under the seat and I heard this very cautious voice say to me If you've got a gun under that seat, leave it there. Yeah, well, I remember you were still lying on the seat at that time with your right hand down. Yeah, the, still feeling under there where I had feeling it. feeling under the seat. Well, I'm glad that that young lad took it from, from under there, but I remember answering at the time, so I was looking for a handkerchief. You said to me, what are you looking for under there? If it's a gun, leave it there. Mm-hmm. That's right. Something I'm pretty sure yeah. that would be the words. That's what I said to you. Yeah. You said something about a handkerchief. You're I said, I'm looking for a handkerchief. That's My right. answer to that would have been rude, I would think. Now, that man, as we talked later in later years, he said to me, Tom, when I put that pistol in your ribs, he said his heart filled up and he didn't know whether he could have ever pulled the trigger. I said, why not, Harvey? He said, because I knew your dad. And he said, I knew that I had a son too. And I thought, a policeman of his calibre, to have concern like that, where I thought before that he was a hard, callous man, that all those sorts changed. He was a thorough gentleman, a man of understanding. It was a trying time for my faith two years after my release on trial leave from from Ararat that I received the the letter that I had dreaded for some time in one way that the doctors had finally gave me the okay, released me from, from certification and said that I was now fit for trial to face up to all criminal charges that I had committed. It was the next day that I received a a visit from the arson squad in Melbourne, Victoria, and they confronted me with the summons and were very politely about it and gentle, said we've heard of your change and all things are going well, but uh, I'm afraid we'll have to see you in court. And friends, that time came that uh, when I did front up with the court or to the court in Bansdale, the old hometown, and I remember quite well that as my, my case was read out, it was a trying time for me and I certainly needed to, uh, it was a trying time for my faith. And yet, all those charges seemed as if it was somebody else, it wasn't me. And the court finally concluded that the, the case was too big for them to handle and it would be adjourned to Melbourne in Victoria to a high judge and jury court. 30 days from now. As you can well imagine, the courthouse was packed and there was a lot of conversation about this local lad that had returned and seemed to be so different. It was also said that uh, apart from the adjournment, I heard the court say, if we jail this man, we're jailing the wrong man. Let me read you a few verses from the Word of God found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he certainly is a new creation. Reading from verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given unto us the ministry of of reconciliation to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself not imputing their trespasses unto them and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation 
Isn't that marvellous? Not imputing their sins unto them. Verse 21. For he, God, had made him, Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. My friends, we are desperately needing in this world a gospel that is preached from the law of Moses and the prophets. The law is the way that will lead a man to Christ. The law lets a man know that he's a sinner and needs a saviour. We have too, too much in our world today that is trying to shortcut the law as if it doesn't even exist. And without the law, we have no knowledge of sin at all. Romans 3, verse 20. Without the law, we really can have no knowledge of sin. We need the law. You know, friends, it wouldn't be really hard for people to think that because they've never sinned in the area that I did and many others, that they're good enough. The law will tell them different than that. It's very hard for people to think that they can be born in sin. But the law will tell you that you are. Today, my friends, for you out there that may, may not even know him, if you hear his voice today, from this message, don't turn away. Today can be your day of salvation.